The Insert Image command can be used to place a raster image onto your drawing. The supported formats are BMP and JPEG. Click on the button and select the image file that you would like to import. The Image Preview dialog box then displays the image along with its properties such as pixel height and width, resolution and colour depth. The Path Type box has three possible settings. These are Absolute, Relative and Embedded. Absolute stores a link to the location of the image file as a full path, i.e. relative to the root folder on the current drive. Use this option if the location of the drawing and image will not change. Relative stores a link to the location of the image as a relative path to the drawing location. Use this option if it is likely that the drawing will be moved. The image should be located in the same folder as the drawing or in a subfolder of the drawing folder. Embedded stores the image inside the drawing file. This ensures the image always appears, but it increases the drawing file size. Use this option if the drawing will be moved or sent to another user. We'll use the embedded option. OK, the Specify Scale Factor tick box allows you to enter a scale factor for the image. Alternatively, if this isn't ticked, you can click two points to define a box for the image to fit inside. Let's select this option and leave the scale factor set to 1. Now, as we move the cursor, a dynamic box representing the size of the image is displayed. Simply click this into place. You will notice the entity handles at each corner, so the image is still selected just in case you want to move it or resize it. Like all other entities, the red handle allows us to pick up the item and move it. The blue handles allow it to be resized or scaled. See here how the proportional size of the image is maintained. You can use any of the input options to define the new point. To deselect the image, just click in free space. Now, what if we want to use this image as part of our drawing, i.e. we would like it to be to scale, or as near to the real size as possible? Well, to do this, we need a reference size. In this case, we have a dimension, here. We know this should be 18 millimeters, so we'll draw an 18 millimeter line here, like this. Now let's change the color so it stands out a bit. So if the 18 millimeter dimension in the image is the same length as the real 18 millimeter line, we know it will be about right. Let's now use the scale command to increase the image size. By the way, the rectangle around the edge of the image never appears on the print. It just allows you to select it, like this. OK, now select the Scale command and pick the bottom point here as the reference point. Now we pick the Reference Point to Scale as the other end of the image dimension. Let's just zoom in a bit here so we don't snap to the middle of the real line. Then we click on the end of the line to define the scale. The image has resized accordingly and our 18mm line is approximately the same length as the 18mm dimension on the image. We no longer need that line now, so we can delete it. Any image placed onto a drafted drawing will always appear behind anything you draw. Let's show this by drawing a red line here. You can easily see that it is above the image. We'll now add another line, but this time we'll make it black. But what happens if the drafted background colour is black? Well, as you know, with this setting, any black lines are automatically displayed as white. 
so that they can be seen. It's worth mentioning this as if the image background is white as well it can appear to obscure parts of the lines as you can see here. Obviously the black screen background is just a display option and print preview shows us the real results.